I was um, in a group called, a vocal group, forehand in vocal group called the Kestrels. I had just started in summer season in Blackpool. I had started to learn a few chords on the guitar because I figured if I was going to stay in the business as a singer, I'd need to learn something about the music. I knew nothing about music then. And I had an idea for a song called Everything in the Garden. I went to a studio, made a demo disc, and took it to Tony Hatch. I couldn't believe it, he loved the song. He not only cut it with Pat Clark, he also cut it with a guy called Jimmy Justice. It wasn't a hit, but it uh, did give me my first taste of, of writing songs. So from then on, um, I started to write uh, seriously. Everybody knows when two heartbeats meet. Somebody was leaving the group, and I actually, we actually replaced that person with my to-be songwriting partner, Roger Cook. So I said to him, look, I write songs. He wrote songs too. He'd been writing songs for a long time with no great success. I had this chord sequence. I was pretty certain it was close to a hit. I had the title. You've got, again, you've got your troubles, I got mine. It always came out of things not going well. And I played it to Roger and he said, within 50 minutes, we'd finished. You got your troubles, I got mine. Like, you got your troubles. I don't know why I went from the G to the A. C sharp one and said, Come, you got your troubles, I got mine. And that's a G to the A, to the C sharp minor, to the D. Had I been trained, I wouldn't have done that. It was a worldwide hit, hit in America. And so Roger Cook and I had our first song together, our first hit. We were always about hooks and things like that and simple, so um, that's what happens. Yeah, you get, uh, you have to be careful that you don't get too complicated. I think most teams, duos or, or trios. I never, we never wrote with more than two other people. It was never four or five or six and sometimes twelve in a room these days. Which you cannot write a song with twelve people, it's impossible. I think what makes a great record will always stay the same if everybody says it starts with a song. If the song's right, it will never change. The Kestrels did the first two tours with the Beatles, so I knew them right from the beginning. Um, and they inspired me to to, to start writing because that was before I'd started writing. I remember on a coach once during the tour because for the first two weeks they came on the coach with us. I remember Kenny Lynch sitting at the back with, with, with uh, uh, Paul and, and John. They were writing a song. Paul had his bass and that was it. John didn't even have the guitar. He was writing on the bass. I can't remember what song was. Probably I want to hold your hand or something like that. And Kenny Lynch coming up to the I'm not sitting while they're writing that crap. They're terrible writers. And of course... They were just writing brand new stuff, great stuff. Every day, I wake up and I thank God for the Beatles. They, uh, they opened America for the British songwriter. Something tells me something's gonna happen tonight. There's a British sound. If, if, if you listen to uh, the, those teams, those duos, they did have special ways and sounds of doing things. Yeah, I think uh, we can, Hora has a pie, and be very proud about the quality uh, of the music when we when we are a tiny island. Something's got a hold of my heart. And Roger had this idea of something's got a hold of my heart, which we we hadn't finished, but we we finished for Gene. And we made a we made a demo of Regent Sound, where he, the Stones used to, to work. Everybody went to Regent Sound because it was in Denmark Street, Tim Pan Alley. You could make a demo for five pounds there in those days. And Gene loved it. Gene went to the studios in America three times to cut that song. Um, and uh, on the third time, uh, he came back to us. He said, well, I, I can't get anywhere near your demo. So the rhythm track of his rec recording is, in fact, our demo track. And he just added some strings and then girl voices. Something's got hold of my heart, keeping my soul and Mark had the genius idea of getting Gene over to sing the middle with him. And it went to number one. Number one here, number one in Germany. So again, you know, to hear... This, a song you had a hit way back when, coming back. I can't explain the feeling, it's just, just wonderful. And that's a good thing also about having a catalogue of hits, if you like. You never know when somebody's either going to sample them or record them again. And that's the great thing about songwriting. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. In those days, the, the two account executives at uh, McCann Erickson, who, who had the Coke account, Billy Davis, and Bill Backer um, used to come into town. They'd sit down and say, what have you got? What pieces have you got? Bits and pieces that you haven't finished. And we just play bits and pieces that we haven't finished. We'll be warm and cosy by the fire. The kids, the dogs.
dog and I And you can have your heart's desire True love True love and apple pie They didn't like that lyric and they decided that uh, it sat down and we wrote I'd like to teach Rod to sing I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love It did go out in the States as a radio commercial and no interest, no, we were on for three months, but no great interest from the public. It wasn't until that commercial with the kids on the hill with the bottles in their hand, different nationalities, different colours, that, um, and once that was on air in America, within 10 days, it was zooming up the chart. It gets to the hook pretty early, you know, every line is like, nice lilt, and you get, I'd like to teach wrote the title very early, it's very catchy. Very uncomplicated, just four, four, basically four chords, you know, simple as that, simple.